To start my process, I usually begin by having my first node and I usually convert my Blackmagic RAW video to either Rec. 709 or if I'm wanting to be a little bit more cinematic, I'll do Gen 5 film to extended video. So I add my Rec. 709 to the first node. As you can see, it gets a little darker, more cinematic. So then I add a second node and that second node is to raise my levels in this main tab here, the main colors tab. I'll raise it somewhat, drop my lows so that the darks stay dark. You don't want to smush them here. I'm going to raise a little bit more if it got too dark there. And if your highlights start to blast out, lower them. And here I just kind of like try to level the image, you know, get, get the darks as dark as they can be without being too dark, and then the brights as bright as they can be to still maintain that cinematic view. So and I'll, and I'll come back to that too, you know, if I need to come back and readjust something that I'm doing with it, uh, like because later you'll add a, a, a cinematic LUT, and it'll get a little darker, so you'll have to boost this later, so just be ready to come back to it. I always squeeze these to the side. So then I'll add, oops, no, this one. I didn't do anything on it yet. Then I will boost some contrast just to make it even more contrasty. And there I kind of like, I look at my secondary screen here that you can't see, but I kind of reference it off of the main one here and my screen. I always think a perfect spot is around 1.2 to 1.3. I don't think anything above that's really necessary. It's so freaking dark. So I usually settle at like 1.24 ish and then you have your pivot so you can adjust your pivot to get it more dynamic contrast versus just kind of subtly get it somewhere right in the middle. See what just looks good. You know, you don't want to over highlight it and it looks so really saturated. Uh, I don't know, somewhere around 0.4 I think, but then see it gets even a little dark with that contrast. So I'll boost those a little bit. Now to our fourth node, I will sometimes add a little bit of saturation here if it's starting to need it. Although this isn't needing it too much. I'm gonna boost it a little brighter here still so I can see more. And I'll still come back to the contrast to determine if I want that or not. My fourth note. So now I start getting into applying a cinematic LUT. So I will go to my LUTs here on the left and I will choose Film Looks. You can scroll through these and see which ones look good. They're very, very drastic when you're just looking at the first versions of them, obviously. But what you do is you pick this is my particularly favorite one that I use for my videos you pick it you go to this tab here key input and then lower the gain and now you can find a sweet spot where you add that contrast but not have it be like that and overpowering so I think a good spot for in here is like you really just got to settle with what you like a 1.9 to 2 ish I don't like to overdo it too hard with this, but it does add a lot. See that difference? It just makes it look a little more dark around the edges. You know, I'll even go back in humor. Sometimes if I'm not liking something like, for example, my contrast, I added three here. Might even look good without contrast or reducing, or without saturation. Sorry, I was saying contrast. Yeah, a little less saturation honestly looks a little better in my opinion. So now that we have the cinematic LUT applied, We'll make another corrector and now we do something that's essential to making that cinematic look which is getting a circle from the window tab put it around yourself you obviously want to highlight yourself and what you're going to do is you're going to lower the lights around the room around you by pressing this here which reverses where the circle lights up and darkens when you're applying these effects to it and then you start to lower the gain and it will lower everything around you. And you'll be like, oh, whoa, man. Why is that like that? Oh. So press on it and raise how soft it is. You can boost the soft pretty high, I mean, 20 to 40. And now it makes everything in the room dark around you. It makes you brighter. So now you can start to see like, all right, maybe it's a little dark for a video to be posted. So then I'll go back, I'll turn this off. I'll go back to my original tab that I used to raise my main gain and lower my lift and I'll raise the gain a little higher. And it starts to make everything look a little brighter. And now, when you go back and you turn down the outside, it starts to make it look a little bit more natural. And now sometimes when I get to this phase, I start to notice here like, okay, all these effects have been applied. I'm super boosted red. When you look at the, um, the scope here, you can notice in my body too, there's tons of saturation in the red. So what I will then do, well now that I've realized I'm at this point where it's starting to look good, I'll go back and I will 
decode using clip and then change my color temp so that it's equal. And you can do that just by sliding and that'll start to make it look way better, like off bat. Yeah, it's like a super necessity. You gotta balance your clips. And like, sometimes you can even start to boost the blue a little bit more when you're doing this. Cause like blue looks a little bit more cinematic in my opinion. I mean, you still wanna have some of the red in your skin, but you can definitely get a little bit more blue instead of the red. And that's like actually starting to get really good here at this point, I think. Ugh, more saturation, less. Now we have that cinematic look. It's starting to get a little darker. See everything got dropped down there, which is great. You can even boost it even less, like drop it down even more if you wanna get something even more drastic. Following, this is a little tip to increase the sharpness on a clip. Make a new corrector, go to your blur tab, lower the radius down to like four seven, and that will increase sharpness slightly here. You can notice by, when you zoom into the body, off, on, off, on, off, on. It makes it a little more staticky. And then what you can do even further to emphasize this is you add another corrector, add a beauty corrector effect, apply it, advance operating mode to automatic. Drop it all the way down to negative 1.5. Lower your scale all the way down. It's gonna get drastically boosted and look terrible. Drop it back down to where it looks good. You don't wanna overdo it because it starts to look terrible like that, but like you can hit a point where it's not too much, but it increases. So then you start to add a little bit of grain when you're at that point. You can see in the skin there, a ton of grain is starting to be added. So then what I'll like to do is add another corrector and I will denoise the image, usually two or three frames. You can just play with the temporal threshold and the spatial threshold to see what affects it in the best way to decrease the noise, but not decrease the detail. If you do it too much, it starts to really blur it out. So you don't want to do that. You just want to have enough to where there's less noise, just a tad. And there we go. Now the before and after. Yeah, makes it much more smooth. You could even drop it down a little bit more in my opinion, just to get a little bit more of that natural look to it. And yeah, once you get it to this point, it's really down to like personal preference on what you want to do. I mean, I usually like to sit my levels at around this middle point here. If I go much higher, then it starts to look uncinematic and you know, it just looks too bright. There's a ton of different ways to make a successful image that's like this. And you know, obviously lighting helps a lot. You can have really good lighting above your head that'll influence it. And you obviously need to get the down shade onto your muscles so you can see it. But doing this will at least make it look like you have like a high end professional lighting system around you a little bit more than what you would have if you were just using your phone in a mirror. I hope you liked the video. I hope you learned something. Please uh, like and subscribe. Thank you very much. Have a good one and be safe. Bye.